Okay, so now that we have a little bit of visualization, I wanted to expand on this just a little bit more. Maybe we have a monster that can patrol around the ground. I'm gonna delete my duplicate monster just so we can see this. You know, maybe this thing wants to patrol around looking for the player, whatever. Maybe it has a, a looped little patrol path or something. I wanna show you how you could maybe visualize the path to the developer, like the level designer who can see, like this is where the path is going to go. And then when they're building their rooms, they can actually see that rather than it just existing in code, right? So again, not, not quite like editor scripting tools building, but we're still making our assets easier to work with by the designers and by the developers. And we just wanna learn about all the tools we have available before we start writing our own. Uh, okay, so we have our monster here. Um, let's go in here and let's actually make a script. We could pretend that this is our, uh, we'll call this C sharp, we'll call this uh, patrol between points. The point of this tutorial series is not to, you know, go how to build a patrolling system. So I'm actually not going to worry about that. I'm just going to show you that when this is functional, how you could visualize this. So I'm going to clear that out, patrol between points. Uh, let's actually attach this to the monster. Uh, monster, we'll say patrol between points. Okay, so now our monster object has the ability to patrol between points. Uh, now, what do we want? Well, we probably want a field. We want an array of points that the monster can patrol between. So we'll, uh, we want a type of transform. Like really all we need is a list of empty game objects that are points in space. So a transform is fine. Uh, this is an array. Let's be explicit about that. And this is, we'll call these patrol points. So if we come back into our scene, now we can create our patrol points, but right now we don't have any. So let's just create a couple Let's create a separate object here. Create, uh, we'll call this uh, patrol points. We're gonna link the patrol points over here. So uh, underneath here, we can zero this out if we want, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna create a few child objects. We'll say patrol point one, two, three, duplicate that. Okay. Okay, so this monster, let's say point one, two, three, and we'll say patrol point one, patrol point two, and patrol point three. So once we have that, we can go back into our script, we have our patrol points. Now, this is a script that is on our monster, right? This is our patrol between points, and then we just give it points to patrol in. I don't like that these game objects are separate. You know, we can make it a child object, but it gets complicated because our points will move with our uh monster again we're not worried about that i just want to show you how we can visualize the system so once we have our patrol points right there uh, we're going to come in here and we're going to use our draw gizmos now um the other one was drawn selected just to show you we could do just draw any time we'll do uh, private void draw gizmos right so these will always be drawn first we're going to give it a color gizmos dot uh, color i think yellow Oops. What I want to do is I want to draw the points in space. So I want to draw a sphere, sphere, sphere for the points. Now what we can do is we can loop through our array and draw a point for each one that it finds. So we could say for each tab, uh, we can come in here, be explicit. We can say for each transform, right? These are types of transform, uh, point in patrol points. Oops, let's get rid of that. There we go, right there. Uh, for each point in our patrol points, we want to draw it. So we'll do dot draw sphere. So in this case, I do want to use the geometry version. I want it to look like a little dot rather than a wire. So we'll say draw sphere at the point dot position, and we'll just make it, you know, kind of small. Uh, maybe we also do a little uh, null check here. Um, if point is not equal null, then we'll draw it. Okay, save that. Okay, so the first thing we need is we need to make sure that we are filling in our array. Okay, now that we have those there, we don't want, we're not worried about it. It's, it's not really drawing it in the scene, right? Like we see something there. So the problem is when we duplicated these points, we didn't really spread them out, right? So we'll, we'll spread them out, point and points like that. Oops. Put that one maybe over there. 
Like maybe we're rounding a corner. Now we still haven't even decided if we want to snap the monster to the first point to start it, or if we want them to walk up to the first point and then loop here. Again, we don't know yet. That's a totally different system, um, but we just want to visualize this first. So you can see, even when I click away from it, we're still drawing the points. But this is all from this one script, this patrol between points. If I deleted, right, you can see it's attached to that game object. Um, so now that we have those points there, maybe we can connect the points with a line. And we'll, we will call this draw paths. So let's draw the paths between each of the point. Draw the paths. At any time I find myself doing this, right, like uh, draw the points. Um, if I leave a comment here, I'm like, ah, oh, that could probably be a separate method. So let's do this. Quick refactor, extract, and call this draw points. And then we'll do draw path. And we saved ourselves a comment. Here we go. Uh, we'll say private void draw paths. All right. Okay, so this is this draws our points. This draws our path, so let's put in the code. So first, let's decide a color. I want to keep this yellow. I think that's fine. Then we're going to do a loop. Okay, I uh, pressed tab twice here. Um, this is a little weird. Technically, we would normally do a, you know, a, a for loop at the type of length because it's an array. Now, here's the weird thing, though. If we go through each of the points, we're going to draw a path to the next point, right? But when we get to the last one, there's no next point. So we actually just want to do one less than the number, right? We're going to draw to the next, draw to the next, but we don't want to run that last time because there's nothing to draw to. You know, there's lots of ways to do this, but we'll just say uh, minus one, length minus one. And I'm just going to be really explicit with this. Just, you know, you could put all this in one line, but I'm just going to show you, we'll say this point is equal to patrol points i. This is our current iteration dot position next point. It's going to be uh, patrol points i plus one. And then once we get these two things, if we do gizmos.drawline, you could actually look it up. We need a one position, like a start point of the line, and then we need an end point of the line. Well, if we've already written this out, then it's pretty easy. It's just this point, next point. Uh, again, you could you could put all this into here, but it becomes a little less readable. You know, I just wanted to make this very clean and clear for the example. I think that should work. Draw points and draw paths. Okay, you know, again, we could do a, a null check. Um, yeah. You could keep expanding on this code. I'm just trying to show you the example. And you can see there, it's drawing a line. Now, it's not super clear because it's against our, our green ground. Uh, but you can kind of see it here. We're just drawing a really thin line. And I think that's all we need. Like, as long as we can visualize that pretty quickly, we're like, oh, right, that's where it, it goes down the corridor. Uh, it's kind of neat. So we could, you know, move these around. And it would still draw. Uh, but again, you see if we, you know, what if one of these was empty? Or let's say what if the first one's empty? It'd, it'd get a little weird, right? Like, you know, we'd get errors and whatnot. So we would maybe want to future proof this a little bit. All we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our index item is valid before we try to get the position from it. So, you know, we could do something like if uh, patrol points i not equal null and patrol points i plus one not equal null then we'd run our code. You know, if it is null, we'll go to the next one. Oh, we're doing, so the, the point here is you're getting an error because you're trying to get the position from something, but if it is null, it's confused. It doesn't really know what to do. So we're just checking to make sure this item is valid before we try to do any kind of accessing on it. Okay, so if we do this, then we should do, uh, come in here, we should get, Okay, so if we were to delete one of these items. Right, we're, we're not getting our errors. It's not drawing the line, right? Because we were, it, it's not valid. So, you know, if, if something didn't get filled properly or whatever, um, it, it shouldn't be a problem. 
and you know we need to actually fill it properly for it to calculate. Um, so maybe this helps fix that little issue if you're looking to do a patrol system and you're tired of the errors and you want to do it. Um, we're just checking the items in the array before we access and draw them. So hopefully that helps you a little bit and uh, hopefully you have a little fun with this little patrol system. Maybe consider building it out into something that actually works.